Thank you, Cahirla, and thank you to the Ken Corla for allowing flexibility to include a fifth topical issue on this important subject, especially after statements yesterday on security in Europe. We woke up this morning to the news that a full-scale invasion had begun in Ukraine, that Ukraine had declared martial law, that explosions had been reported in multiple cities across the Ukraine. And at the outset, I want to express my utmost solidarity with Ukrainian people in Ukraine and also here in Ireland. Earlier today, Deputy Farrell and I, uh, and I know so many other members of these houses, met with the Ukrainian Irish community outside Dole Aaron, members of our shared community terrified for their families in Ukraine. They have stood outside today in the cold and the rain and the snow, and I hope that they see our solidarity with them uh, from everybody going out, but also from cars passing in the street, beeping and supporting them. Um, there are extensive subway systems uh, across Ukraine, and from what we're hearing, those unable to flee at this point are going underground, seeking protection and making plans uh, to protect themselves against bombing and ballistic missiles. And as we, write this, as, as, as we speak, Russian forces have attacked and seized control of an airport and attempting to take control of other strategic, defense, uh, other strategic measures. Um, I want to welcome today in particular an Irish-Ukrainian family from my constituency to Leinster House today and they're sitting in the gallery now, Minister. I spoke with them this morning. They have family in Ukraine uh, trying to flee, trying to head southwest, and they are part of that traffic jam that we've seen um, on, on the television today trying to, trying to leave Kiev, people literally fleeing for the well-being of their families. These are the people, the families that need safe refuge in Ireland. They're very real, raw, heartbreaking human experiences that nobody ever wants to have to think about. Minister, this is an indefensible aggression in Europe, but by no means the first such aggression by Europe. It is, as the Taoiseach said, immoral, an immoral and outrageous breach of the most fundamental principles of international law. Uh, we, could you outline to the House Minister in the topical today the humanitarian response that we can expect from the Irish government to respond to the concerns of families here, today and outside, in particular for those Ukrainians who have been prominent critics of Russia and Putin, and indeed the scale, if you can, of the economic retaliation and other retaliation that is appropriate to this aggression that we can anticipate by the EU. Thank you very much, Cúhirlach, um, and I thank Deputy Carr McNeill for having the foresight to put this uh, item on the agenda, and, and indeed the Minister for making himself available. And just like my colleague, I woke this morning and turned on my radio um, and immediately felt uh, my heart uh, at the pit of my stomach with uh, the horrific news that uh, the Russian Federation had invaded a, the sovereign territory of U Ukraine. And like any uh, Democrat or like any parent, um, you immediately think of the, the women, the men and the children of that nation and the terror that they must feel and, and, and are feeling as we speak. Um, it is an act of, of tyranny, an act of barbarism on the part of the Russian Federation. And in particular, I'm especially aggrieved with the lies that we have been told over the last number of, of days and weeks. Indeed, even in this house, in the committee, where the uh, ambassador to the Russian Federation presented himself to the committee for questions. Um, this is a murderous rampage from a despot that will undoubtedly kill tens, if not thousands, of innocent victims, of innocent citizens of Ukraine going about their ordinary business. And I listened very carefully to the Ukrainian ambassador on the radio this morning, um, and I could hear the emotion. It was hard not to feel the emotion um, that she expressed on behalf of her people and her government. Um, like my colleague, Cahirlock, I, I, I have very grave concerns for the innocents uh, in Ukraine right now, and I'm very pleased to have heard what the Taoiseach uh, said earlier in relation to visas. I'd like for you to explain that in more detail, uh, and indeed the supports that are being offered on the ground to Irish citizens and indeed um, their, their families, uh, who may not all be, be of Irish extraction. Thank you. And can I thank the deputies for raising this issue? Let me say first that Ireland and all of our EU partners stand in solidarity with Ukraine and the Ukrainian people on this shocking day when Russia has unprovoked initiated missile strikes and a ground invasion on their country. Today's invasion by Russia of Ukraine's sovereign territory and its attack on its people 
is an outrageous and immoral breach of the most fundamental and basic of international law. Prior to the events overnight and today, the EU had already stepped up its support to Ukraine. At the Foreign Affairs Council meeting on Monday, uh, we decided to provide 1.2 billion euros of macro financial assistance to Ukraine. The EU is one of the largest humanitarian donors to eastern Ukraine. Since 2014, the European Union and its member states have contributed over a billion euros in humanitarian and early recovery aid to support the needs of people in the areas directly affected by the conflict and those who have had to flee that conflict. Ireland is among a number of EU member states who responded with an offer of medical supplies. Today the Government is working on a further package from Ireland to support the people of Ukraine and the Taoiseach will be in a position to announce this later on this evening. In response to Russia's actions, a first package of new sanctions was formally adopted yesterday. The sanctions package is wide-ranging and contains a number of elements. An EU travel ban and an asset freeze extended to all 351 members of the Russian State Duma who voted in favour of this violation of international law. An asset freeze and a travel ban applying to 22 key decision makers, business figures, military officers and persons involved in leading the disinformation war against Ukraine. An asset freeze will also apply to three private banks and an entity responsible for disinformation. The package also targets the ability of the Russian state and government to access EU capital and financial markets and services. This limits Russia's ability to finance further aggression in terms of policies and actions. New measures also target economic relations between the EU and the two breakaway regions. This includes an import ban on goods from the non-governmental controlled areas of Donetsk and Luhansk. Restrictions on trade and investment related to certain economic sectors a prohibition on the supply of tourism services and an export ban for certain goods and technologies. All EU sanction, sanctions regulations have direct effect and as such are legally binding on all natural and legal persons in Ireland and across the EU. Private companies have an obligation to ensure that they are in full compliance with these new measures. Sanctions will not be cost free for this country or other EU member states but we are left with little choice by Russia's behaviour. In the light of the very serious developments overnight, the EU will move forward with a second, even more wide-ranging sanctions package this evening. A special meeting of the European Council has been called for this evening and the Taoiseach is attending. Ireland and our partners in the European Union will adopt the most severe package of sanctions that Europe has ever considered. The Deputy also inquired about Irish citizens based in Ukraine. In light of developments, the Department of Foreign Affairs advises all Irish citizens currently in Ukraine to shelter in a secure place. However, citizens should consider leaving Ukraine if they judge it safe to do so, depending on their location and prevailing circumstances, of course. It is likely that routes out of Ukraine will be severely disrupted and the road network and border crossings may face closures at short notice. Our embassy is no longer operating in Kiev and our staff and other staff uh, are transferring to a safe place as we speak. Any Irish citizen requiring uh, emergency consular assistance should contact a dedicated telephone line 01613 which has now been set up by the Department of Foreign Affairs. The Department will issue regular updates online and on our Ask DFA IRL Twitter account as the situation develops. The Department of Foreign Affairs remains in direct and ongoing contact with Irish citizens in Ukraine who have registered with the Embassy of Ireland in Kiev, currently totalling around 70 people. The safety and security of Irish citizens and also their dependents in Ukraine is our absolute priority. Cahirlach, finally, to the 4,000 Ukrainian people who call Ireland their home, can I say that our hearts are breaking with them as we stand with them today. The Ukrainian and Irish people have much in common. Kindness, fairness, friendship run to the core of Ukraine. And like Ireland, Ukrainian families are large and interconnected with a deep intergenerational bond. 
The Ukrainian diaspora across the world cares for and supports their family at home, and I know how worried they are today. We had hoped to avoid this war. We had, in fact, pleaded with Russia to pull back from the brink through multiple diplomatic efforts. Those hopes and pleas were, pleas were ignored, and instead we see illegality, aggression and killing. Can I say to those in the um, gallery this evening and to the other thousands of Ukrainians in Ireland, uh, I am working with my colleague, Minister Helen McEntee, the Minister for Justice, to put a structure and system in place that will allow Ukrainian citizens in Ireland bring their families from Ukraine to Ireland uh, if they judge that that's necessary uh, for safety reasons. And we will ensure that that system works and is streamlined. And likewise, uh, for Irish citizens who are in Ukraine, uh, who of course want to bring their families with them home, who may not be Irish nationals, we will also ensure uh, that we have a process in place that will allow them to do that quickly uh, and without uh, impediments as such as uh, difficult visa application processes or anything like that. But the Ministry um, for Justice uh, and the Minister for Justice uh, and, and my department are working out the practicalities of how we can ensure that that system will work uh, for, for those here and in the Ukraine uh, who may need to flee uh, for their safety. Uh, uh, but I look forward to taking any further questions uh, that Thank deputies you. may have. Thank you, Minister. I allowed a certain amount of latitude because of the seriousness of the situation. So the deputies have uh, a minute each. <coughs> Thank you, Minister, uh, for outlining the steps, and we'll hear more from the Taoiseach later. Um, you know, for the benefit of the House, obviously the key concern for those families is actually getting out. And, if, and in particular, you know, now that you know, martial law has been declared, that's going to be very, very difficult for the men. And I'm thinking in particular of prominent anti-Russian, anti-Putin journalists who have spoken out over the past months and years so bravely uh, in defence of democracy and against imperialist aggression and those people are identifiable and they're in Ukraine and it is incredibly difficult for their families to think about that and it is so important to identify it. There have been reports of cyber attacks on car insurance. They would know who anyone is and what their car looks like and what the registration number is. Can you, you know, we've seen reports from across Europe. We know the work is, is going on about getting out, but the key thing is about getting out in the first instance. And the sanctions are, additional sanctions are welcome. I've run out of time, Cahir, look. But we know that so much has moved already and they really need to be very, very effective. Thank you very much, uh, Cahir, look. Um, and I just want to mention my appreciation for Moldova, who uh, at last I checked had taken over 4,000 refugees on their border. Um, and of course that prompted this debate uh, because uh, we have a role to play, and I'm very heartened by what the Minister ha has said. Um, there are 4,000 um, Ukrainian citizens in Ireland. There's, there's a, a, a prominent local businessman in Malahide whom I know very well, whom I'm very fond of, because he's an absolute gentleman. Um, and it's important to me to know that there's an opportunity for families to be re reunified in, in these circumstances, and that's why I'm very pleased to hear what the Minister has mentioned in relation to both his department and the Department of Justice, and I'd like to thank him for that. As a neutral nation, of course, we cannot um, declare war, but we can declare financial warfare on the Russian Federation along with our European partners, and I think that is entirely necessary for us to do. So I very much look forward to what the Taoiseach has to announce this evening, but I think that we have to make um, life as difficult as possible for businesses and for the Russian Federation government in particular because of the absolute barbarism that they have unleashed upon the Ukrainian people this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Minister, final reply. Yeah, thank you, uh, Deputies. I, I can remember um, uh, as, a, as an MEP um, travelling to, to Kiev as, a, as an election observer uh, during what was then called the Orange Revolution uh, in Freedom Square in, in Kiev. Uh, I remember the excitement the night before the elections uh, and the sense of momentum and change uh, at that time in Ukraine. Uh, of course, there was some division too in, in the context uh, of East and West, but it was a time of genuine hope uh, for a new direction uh, for a country that was 
that was looking, looking west uh, with hopes uh, and ambitions for the future. Um, uh, and that's why I, I think when, when those of us who, um, who have uh, followed uh, the ups and downs and challenges of Ukrainian politics since then, uh, when we see what is happening there today, uh, it really is shocking um, that, um, that we are seeing uh, at the heart of Europe uh, a level of aggression uh, that takes us back many decades in Europe, uh, that shows that the lessons of history on this continent have not been learnt by some, uh, as Russia attempts to undermine and change uh, the, the political uh, and uh, state relationships uh, uh, and stability on the continent of Europe by the actions that they're taking today and the threats that they are making to those outside of Ukraine also who may dare to interrupt their plans. Uh, and so um, can I say that uh, the role that Ireland will play here will not be a neutral one. We are a neutral state. We are militarily non-aligned. But when we see the continent that we have helped to build in terms of political stability over many decades being threatened in the way that is now happening, coming from Russia, uh, by illegally invading their neighbour, uh, we need to stand up and ensure that we are part of resisting um, that negative change on our continent. We also, as ever, uh, need to take actions on a human level and a huma humanitarian level in the context of supporting those who may have to leave or flee Ukraine, or indeed through NGOs uh, and others uh, support those who are staying but who may need our help in the weeks and months ahead. Um, so Ireland will be very much part of a collective EU effort. I've been in politics for 25 years. I'm not sure I have ever seen anything that has united the EU in the way that this issue is currently uniting European countries. Countries that have very different relationships with Russia historically. But believe me, the resolve that I'm hearing from some of my EU colleagues, and indeed from the European Commission uh, and other institutions within uh, the EU, is one of a steely determination to show that European democracy matters. Uh, and that we will take the necessary actions, even if they are painful ones for the EU, in order to stand up to what we are seeing happening uh, to our eastern um, uh, neighbours. Um, so to Ukrainians, can I say uh, we are going to be with you through this as much as we possibly can be, uh, and to our other EU um, colleagues and indeed our other partners in the United Kingdom and in the US and in Canada and in Japan and in Australia and many other countries that will be part of this collective effort. Um, Ireland will uh, not be found wanting in terms of being uh, a part uh, of, of those efforts to try to reverse uh, what we are seeing uh, coming from Russia today in the context of what's happening uh, in Ukraine. Um, so I, the Taoiseach will have an opportunity later on this evening to outline some of the detail uh, of what I've announced this evening in terms of what sanctions look like, what our humanitarian support package, our initial one at least, looks like, uh, and also some of the detail perhaps in terms of, of how we can facilitate uh, Ukrainians to come to Ireland should they need to for safety and shelter.